guys, this is Charles from Team COG. Coming at you guys here with 14th place Crusadia deck list. That is right. I was able to get a hold of man Michael, who was able to get me his deck list from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Extravaganza event. So we have the 14th place, go second, big monsters, whack deck list. Uh, before we continue on, huge shout out to him for reaching out to me to allow me to get this deck list to give to you guys. So my man, thank you so much. Another thing, a huge shout if you guys want to help support the channel, hit that join button down below and become a member today. It actually is just... It helps the channel out quite a bit. And uh, without further ado, if you guys also want to get your own play mats, your own Crusadia sticker, go ahead and check out the Team CLG company that site down below. So without further ado, guys, let's just go ahead and jump into, that's right, jump into the deck profile. Uh, so right off the bat, guys, we are seeing that he is playing three Ash Blossoms and Hand Traps. Ash Blossom is one of the best Hand Traps to play because he, uh, it just allows him, it, you hit virtual rolls that way. And uh, at the end of this, I'll have his matchups here. Let me actually get to his matchups right here. So he said match round one was a Lunar Light Easy 2-0. Uh, match two, Zodiac Tri Brigade 0-2. Match three, Zodiac Eldritch 2-0. And then we have a Zodiac Eldritch again. Poor guy got back-to-back -back Zodiac. 2-1 uh, that match. And then his match five was a no-show. So free wins, we take those. Match six was Virtual World 2-1. Match seven was Virtual World 2-0. Then we have Mech Invoked, didn't stand a chance, 2-1. And match number nine is a Virtual World. And finally, they were able to get their revenge against him, 0-2. Oh, so uh, there was his matchups. Uh, yeah, pretty solid. He did. He played a lot of Virtual World, a lot of like, probably meta decks. The only thing he didn't play that interests me is Drytron, but he explained that he was very fearful of Drytron and Virtual World going into the format. He ended up playing one out of the two, so I mean, he had a 50-50 shot of playing one on the other. But anyway, after the three Ash Blossoms, we have, of course, every three Crusadia. We have three Arborea, three Draco, three Leonis, three Maximus, three Reclusia. And that's the whole Crusadia lineup. You, you got to play it in today's time. If you do not see a Crusadia, you do not play the game. And that's super important is, well, being able to play the game. So again, then we have a Kaiju. We have Dogaron. Then we have two Formant Skipper. I'm mm, for two each their own with Formant Skipper, especially with the Gamma still being the format. You normal summon Skipper, the Gamma over you. You lose. You have no way to extend past that, and that just I'm not I'm not willing to take that chance. He clearly did, and it paid off for him. Uh, but what's really good about it, uh, Skipper is it gets you to Parallel Exceed, which is a busted card in the deck. So that's you know hindsight 2020. I you know he's braver than I am because knowing my like every time I normal Skipper I'd eat it uh, Gamma or Ogre. Uh, if you get impermed on this, it's not as bad because you can just link up off into uh, a Link Karibo or something like that. Uh, but we'll. Go, that's probably in his extra deck. We'll just keep on going here. Then we have one Gadara, Mothra practically, one Gambasil, and one Kamungus. So he's playing four Kaijus, which of course, if you guys will see further in the list, is so that his uh, Kaiju slumber is always live. But, and then we're playing on top of three Nibiru, two, three Paralytic Seed. Oh, excuse me, there's one more Thunder King down there. So five Kaijus. And uh, so here's kind of like my, like, you're playing a go second deck, you're playing the go second strategy. This is. You know, I mean, you're playing so much mass removal that whatever they stick on the field, you're going to be able to solve. It's just, you better hope it's enough sort of thing. If they, it's one of the, like, no matter what, like, Nibiru can be dead in the hand as long as you top deck it, but he plays five Kaijus, which allows him to possibly top deck a Kaiju or Slumber. So, I, you know, in my opinion, if you're going second, you have to play a lot of hand traps this format, and he's playing the best ones, which is Ash. Ash hits Virtual World. Ash hits the uh, Drytrons, I believe, because they activate in hand. It's, you know... Can't remember it's been a while. Imperm is still just a good generic hand trap to have for going first, going second. And of course, the Rocky Boy, the Boulder, just comes down and cleans out a field. It's pretty nice too. Uh, the only problem is that token, Echomax does not gain the token. It's uh, the, Echomax, the token's like original attack is zero. So I mean, if Echomax could gain that token, I believe Nibiru would be a staple in the deck no matter what. Uh, but on the, like the Paralytic Seed, I think every Crusade actually playing Parallel Exceed, it just gives you instant rank 4 access, gives you two monsters for one. Uh, the only thing that would be better is if they were Crusadia monsters, but... Moving on through the spells, we have three Crusadia Power, one Crusadia Revival. So, he's playing three power because, I mean, Call by the Grave is at one. We need the power. We have to have the power. You know, He-Man that crap. I have the power uh, to play through anything. The only bad thing about it is a hard, it is a hard once per turn. But I mean, all you need, especially in this variant, is you just need your Crusadia effects to resolve. You're not going off into LP. You're not going up into Crystal Hell Fibrax. Everything you're doing is pure, in its sense, Crusadia. So that's where this card comes in very clutch. Then of course, Crusadia Revival. Crusadia Revival is the field spell that just allows you to go pat 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 
pet over multiple monsters, and that is very needed. That's actually really cool. Uh, I side this card because, like I said, in my builds, I always try to go first because, in my opinion, I'd rather try to build my board than versus trying to break in the day's format. But uh, it's nice to see that this card's in the main deck. Uh, that's probably the crawler of the deck, to be honest with you, since he's not playing crawler. So he's probably he's probably drawn that quite a bit because these Crusadia cards are cursed, I swear. Uh, then we have Crusade, uh, not Crusadia Slumber. Uh, Kaiju Slumber, this right here is just a massive board wipe to practically equal out the playing field, smack down a Kaiju, give yourself a Kaiju, make Cr Crusadia Equimax punch over for game. You're going to want to give your opponent Gamma Seal as long as you don't open Gamma Seal and give yourself one of the bigger beaters like Dogaron or the Thunder Strike Kaiju. And then like the Fiverr No Crusader Crawler, which you're going second deck, you definitely do not want to see Crawler if you're going second, unless you are a break a board, build a board type playstyle, which the combo Crusaders kind of are. They build, they break their board just to build up their board. You always want to have Crawler to have access to it, but in this variant, there's no need for it. You absolutely should not play it. You need all the gas you can in your hand to break that board. And I, you know, it's just, uh, it is what it is. Uh, then move down, move down here to the side deck. We have one Pranker Tops. It's that one for a reason. It's really good. It's a very good going second card. I mean, your entire strategy is going second, so why not play some of the best going second cards? We have Ghost Bell. Uh, my guess is Ghost Bell is the best option here because it hits, I think it hits the Drytrons, if I remember right. If I remember right, that's what it's in there for. It hits Drytrons. And then Forbidden Chalice. So very much to note is this guy was on a budget. And Forbidden Chalice is just another way to hit True King of All Calamities. When that son of a gun goes to activate its effect, most of the time, they wait for you to commit a monster to make sure they're safe from Imperm, and if you fire off Imperm right away, they're going to chain it. So there's no point. That's where the Chalice comes in. Just being able to quick play that guy and completely stop True King is super good. Uh, then we have one Heartbeat's Feather Duster. Just as every, just all Crusadia, the bane of every Crusadia variant is back row. And uh, then Triple Titty Twisters. Uh, in this variant, since you're, you're not trying to have longevity in the game, you're trying to one-punch that discard, even though it probably discards like an important card from your hand, or in this card you can pit discard like other cards like a Kaiju Slumber, or the extra rocks you have, other Kaiju, you know, bricks in your hand just to clear back row. It's very good in this sense because you only need two cards to OTK. So and like the other three cards in your hand, or excuse me, four cards that are gonna be in your hand once you draw, they're just extra resources and having that and just paying twin twisters to pitch and wipe out an entire like two sets to just make sure your one punch goes through is really good. We then have three dimensional barriers. I assume this is in here for also for Drytron. And uh, I mean, it's just overall, it's a good going first card for the deck to side into. Call Ritual, call Exceed, Plenty and Shadal, call Fusion, Invoked, Dogmatica is still a thing. You know, you just, it's just a really good going first card for this strategy. Uh, then we follow up with a red reboot. Respect the boot. Uh, then for the extra deck, we have one Abyss Weather. Hurts Dinos, you know. Double Crusadia Equimax because we're going to one punch them. Three Crusadia Magius. Two Regulex. One Spatha. So this is correct if you're playing the Go Second variant. You're just there to you're just there to come in, one punch, leave. You're not there to have dinner. You're not there to talk. You're not even there to socialize. You're there to come in, whack, get out of there. And that's why you play this many, you know, this many Crusadias. There's no need to be like light on your numbers because you have the extra space. And then I'd also like to note out that here he's playing two Regulex. Regulex is, like I said, the second best OTK outside of Equimax and Avermax, or well, third best. So he's playing two of these because sometimes you need two. Sometimes in the longevity of the game, when you can't OTK, you need another one. And if you're forced to go first here, the thing you're trying to do is either get to Avermax or you're trying to get to um, Equimax. And in this build, he does not look, there, there he is, he was hidden. Okay, so he does play Avermax. So you just want to have the extra resources to be able to one-punch because your board's probably more likely going to get broken because the best thing that this deck more than likely can do is probably just put up Equimax and Pass along with maybe a Nibiru in the hand, some hand traps, or maybe, you know, you're able to get the Paralytic Seed because he is playing Skipper, he can get Dex Seed, so he's in and on Equimax and a Dweller. So, I mean, it's possible. Then we have one Hita, interesting, one IP Mascarina, probably to go into the next card, which is Avermax. And then we have a Baylinx and a Win, I believe. And Baylinx is super interesting because Baylinx is practically, since he's not playing Ling Rebo, he's just going into Baylinx to get rid of the Foreman Skipper if he gets Impermed or anything like that, Effect Baylor, you name it. And yeah, so talk to the guy a little bit. He said the only thing he feared going into this event was Virtual World and Drytrons, and he actually ended up playing three Virtual World, and he gave them the quick Ws except for one 
and he ended up getting 14th place. I believe he was seven and two. Yeah, seven and two sounds right. So a huge shout out to you, my man. Thank you so much for sharing this. If you guys have any questions in the comment section down below, go ahead and comment. I'm sure he'll pop in and answer those questions. And yeah, guys, so this is Charles from Team COG wishing you guys happy holidays. I'm also signing out.